Welcome to week 22 of the Mama Say Fit Pregnancy Week by Week Update. In this video, we're going to share what you can expect for your baby during this week, what might be going on with you, and then I'm going to share how I'm feeling in my 22nd week of pregnancy as well because I am currently pregnant with baby number four. If you are pregnant, be sure to comment below to let us know how you are feeling because we would love to connect with you on this journey. But before we dive into what can you expect during week 22 of pregnancy, I do want to share that my book, Training for Two, is now available for pre-order. Training for Two helps you to learn how you can use your prenatal fitness to stay strong throughout your pregnancy with lifting modifications for each trimester, stay pain-free throughout your pregnancy with pelvic stability and core exercises, in addition to preparing for birth by helping you understand how to create space within your pelvis with different exercises that you can do both during pregnancy and positions that you could do during birth. And so you can head down to the notes below to grab your pre-ordered copy. The book comes out in September of 2024, shortly after this baby is due. So I got two babies coming this fall, but we would greatly appreciate your support in pre-ordering the book. So Roxanne, what can we expect for baby during week 22 of pregnancy? So week 22, baby is the size of an ear of corn or a classic Game Boy. If you know what a classic Game Boy is, if you are a millennial, just like us, you know what a classic Game Boy is. If you are not, sorry, just Google it or Ear of Corn. I really loved the Pokemon games when I had my Game Boy. Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. I think they're back in style, though. Pokemon, I think, has made a comeback. Yeah. Well, we have to redo these for Gen Z. I don't even know. Ear of Corn is Gen Z. (laughs) They, They eat corn. So there you go, Gen Z. Um, but during week 22, baby's hair is starting to grow more. So now they're like growing hair on the top of their head if they're going to have hair or if they're bald like my my daughter was. But like their eyebrows are starting to come in because before they were just eyebrow lifts. Uh, maybe eyelashes. Babies have like the best eyelashes ever. Can I have them, please? I really do. When I had my ultrasound with all my kids, they had like their hair was like floating in the the amniotic fluid, which is really cool. You can't really see it right now, but like later on in pregnancy, if you get an ultrasound, yeah. you'll actually see it kind of floating, floating. around, which is they really usually cool. will point it out too. I had like a thirty week ultrasound with Colin, and his hair was floating, so I knew he he was going to have a lot of hair at birth. Um, but my other two just baldies. My girls were baldies. My boy had a lot of hair. Not not really fair. But babies also had that lanugo, other than just the hair on their head and the eyebrows and eyes. They also have that fine, like, pale white hair around their bodies. Just, I mean, they're living in water, so they got to have something. But if some babies will come out and that lanugo will be darker in color, like brown or black, and this is when it starts to darken as well, which is kind of cool. The next thing that's happening with baby is we already know baby can hear us. So like they've been able to hear us sing to them and talk to them and read books to them. But now their central nervous system is more developed that they can actually respond to their sounds. So they can respond either when a loud noise happens, they might jump to it. Or if you're singing or playing music to them, maybe they're like dancing and they're responding to it. The start of like good rhythm that I don't have. During my last pregnancy with Sophie, Owen, my son, dropped a metal bowl down onto, like, tile floor, and it was so loud that Sophie actually, like, jumped in utero. Like, I felt her, like, jolt, which was, like, I was, like, are you okay? Like, uh, but it was, she was responding to this super loud, sudden noise, which I was, like, shocked. It was, like, the first time I'd ever experienced that throughout my pregnancy. Or... When uh, you sneezed and your oh, yeah. <laughs> baby girl poked you and you were like, why did you poke me, Roxanne? And I was like, what are you I forgot I'm about driving. that. I sneezed and there was a sharp like poke like in my abdomen. And I was like, Roxanne, like that was unnecessary. It was my baby like jumping in response to my aggressive sneeze. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. 22 weeks. Babies respond to sounds. <laughs> but that's really all that's kind of new with baby this week. But for you, you might start noticing other people, maybe not, 
um, week 22, your belly has started to grow rapidly for a lot of us and your belly button might be starting to pop out now. So my belly button started popping out probably earlier each and every pregnancy. My belly button just got a more and more of an Audi and it's now just permanently an Audi. Um, but if you did, if you do have more of like an innie, it might take a little bit longer. Like I think Gina's belly button's still, still in, but she, you had a pretty deep innie. I had a innie Audi. So it wasn't, didn't take much to make it a, an Audi. Though some people call it like your like turkey based or your like. Yeah, the, to not, let you know that the pregnancy's done. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a lot left to go. It did, it did not tell, it did not tell the truth. You might also notice that your skin is starting to get really itchy. And this, again, could be a little bit hormonal. It's causing a little bit more dry skin. You also have like that higher demand of needing to be hydrated. So your whole skin might just start to feel really itchy, um, as well as the belly from just the sudden stretching from it growing bigger. So belly balms for the belly or just like lotions or being hydrated can be really beneficial at this time to kind of help with that dryness. For me right now, I I have felt like my belly like suddenly grew pretty rapidly. Like now it's like very obvious that I am pregnant as long as I'm not like wearing baggy clothes. But I have been feeling a little bit more itchiness with my belly because of that stretchy. So I've been using a lot of like oil-based belly balms to help like with hydrating my skin. So I currently use Primarily Pure's Body Butter, which has been like my favorite for the past three pregnancies now. Um, and then for hydration, just I have a giant water bottle that I just refill throughout the day. I think it's like 32 ounces. And uh, for about like one or two of those throughout the day, I, th I, do, I do throw some element in there as well to help hydrate as well. And so if you're interested in either the body butter that I'm using throughout my pregnancy or the hydration salts that I'm using, we'll link them down in the notes below. Another thing you might start to experience, and this is something that a lot of people mentioned to me prior to becoming pregnant, because I like we are just chronically cold people. Like I wear I wear a sweater when it's 70 degrees out because I'm cold. But people are like, just wait till you get pregnant because you're going to be hot all the time. And this might be around the time you start to experience hot flashes where you're cold and then you're suddenly sweating through your outfit and then you might be cold and then you might have a hot flash or you're just constantly hot and you're impossible to cool down. And this is, of course, due to the lovely hormones that are surging through your body. I think the only time that I wasn't just cold was during pregnancy. And then the last thing that you might start noticing, um, this is really just like the second trimester to third trimester. It might happen at any point, but 22 weeks is about the Top, the earliest that you might start to notice this is that relaxing is great because it allows your pelvis to be able to move and accommodate the baby moving through it. It's not great because we also have joints throughout our entire body to include our feet. And the relaxing can allow your joints in your feet to relax and cause your feet to grow. You thought your feet were done growing when you were out of puberty, <laughs> but just kidding. During pregnancy, they can grow like up to a like a whole shoe size larger. And then after pregnancy, they don't always go back to your pre-pregnancy size. So all of the shoes that you owned prior to now no longer fits. I've, the number of people that I know that had to give away or sell all of their shoe collection was mind-blowing um, and very sad. Thankfully, that did not happen to me. Uh, my feet are still the same size. Um, but if you need an excuse, you can say that your feet grew to get some really cool hands-free shoes because Kizix, they're needed in all pregnancies. But that's really it that's happening during week 22. Gina, though, how are you feeling? Physically, I'm feeling pretty good. My workouts are still pretty regular. I'm currently refilming all of our second trimester on-demand workouts. So that's been keeping me very consistent with my workouts and motivating me to keep moving my body. So I think that really contributes towards why I feel so good throughout my pregnancy right now. However, I have been having more like pregnancy insomnia again. I was feeling like super congested from being pregnant. And then also it's pollen season in North Carolina. So that has just made things worse for me. And because I've been so congested, I've been getting that like post nasal drip into my throat. And so then my throat started getting sore. And because of that, I was having trouble breathing. And I would wake up in the middle of the night, not being able to really take a deep breath. And then I would panic. 
And then I would have pregnancy anxiety or just normal anxiety. <laughs> I feel like that's probably it's pregnancy anxiety because you're pregnant. But I feel like anyone would be anxious because yeah. they woke up and they're like, I can't breathe. So I just mentally spiraled and was like, what if I suffocated? Like, that would be scary. So not a great, not a great way to go back to sleep. So initially what I was doing to help resolve the anxiety was I would just like walk around my house for like three hours while scrolling on Instagram until I was so exhausted that I fell asleep. Not my recommendation. So I would just not, gaslit yourself I would into not recommend falling back asleep. I would just distract myself until I was like exhausted and then I would pass out again. Not a great strategy. Would not recommend but what then I started doing more recently was I was doing a breathing exercise, which is like, it's called a physiologic sigh, and it helps to kind of lower your heart rate and to relax you. And so you take a big inhale, you pause, and then this allows the air sacs to start to deflate. And then you take another inhale before you exhale. And this increases the size of the air sacs to help you release more carbon dioxide, which helps you relax. And then you take a really long exhale, which helps to lower your heart rate. So it's like a big inhale. And then another inhale. And then a really slow exhale. So like right now for me, I already feel more relaxed just from doing that. But I do about like three or five of those. And it just helps me like it gives me something to focus on. And it just kind of helps lower my heart rate and calm me down. So if the breathing exercise is not enough for me, I'll also do a vagal nerve reset exercise, which is called half salamander. So I'll just be laying in bed and I'll look to one direction and then I kind of bring that ear to that shoulder and I'll take like a few breaths here and then I'll do it to the other side. And this is supposed to help like reset your vagal nerve or relax it or stimulate it so that your heart rate can go down. And that usually, I just pass right on after that. I uh, half salamander. I don't know. It's just what it's called. This is what Google said. <laughs> um, so that's what I've been doing lately to help with more of the anxiety at night and to also help me go back to sleep. Yeah, I don't know. It just works. But I will say that if you are experiencing a lot of anxiety that is starting to impact your daily life, working with a specialist throughout your pregnancy can be really beneficial. Like you don't have to wait till postpartum to start working with a mental health specialist if you are experiencing like anxiety, depression, or any other like mental health issues throughout your pregnancy, because they can kind of heighten during this really transformative time of our lives. So in one of my postpartums, I had postpartum OCD, and I found working with a therapist to be super beneficial for me. And so if you're having anxiety or other issues that are impacting your daily life, definitely working with a therapist can be super beneficial. So thanks so much for listening to week 22 of what to expect during your pregnancy. Let us know how you are feeling during your 22nd week, like what physical symptoms are you feeling? Are you also having pregnancy insomnia as well? Hopefully you can breathe better than I can. We would love to connect with you on your journey. If you want more support throughout your pregnancy, check out our online prenatal fitness programs. Our online prenatal fitness programs are designed to help you stay strong throughout your pregnancy as you prepare for birth. We offer our program in two formats. We have our app-based program, which is a self-paced workout. So it's a list of exercises with demo videos. And then we also have our workout videos that you follow along with at the same time, known as our on-demand program. If you're looking for a childbirth education, we have an online self-paced course that you can learn the anatomy and physiology and some of that science of labor to help take away that mystery to make it less scary. We discuss labor positions that you can utilize as well as different phases of labor and what can your partner do to help support you through the laboring process. And as a thank you for watching this entire video, you can use code YouTube10 to get 10% off any of the courses that we have or fitness programs. So you can grab a prenatal fitness program, a childbirth education program to help support you for pregnancy, and you can bundle them together to get additional discounts, which makes it pretty much free.